Well, hello and welcome back to Electrical Fundamentals Engineering 201 and we're going to be working on experiment number five today. So that's uh, dealing with uh, operational amplifiers. Those are uh, important circuits if you're going to uh, try and take a signal and uh, amplify it or uh, build yourself an analog uh, computer to multiply uh, by a factor or do something like that. So uh, very useful circuit. So without uh, further ado, let's uh, uh, get to the, uh, to the circuit and uh, the work and uh, go from there. So I'm going to uh, switch cameras on you here. We'll uh, move over to this one. And uh, here is the uh, uh, experiment, and if this is a little bit hard to read, you've got this in uh, PDF form, so you can refer to that. But here is our uh, circuit. It looks like an uh, inverting uh, circuit. If you go back to the lecture material, and I will um, uh, look at that in a, in a little bit, but uh, basically uh, that circuit there is a inverting uh, setup. And uh, we're going to be, you can see the, uh, get a pencil here, you can see the uh, points here, these uh, on, the, on the circuit, the, this two, that's pin number two, pin number three, pin number seven, uh, pin number six, pin number four, so the pin diagram. And I'll talk about the, uh, the, the, the pin numbers in, in a little bit, but that will uh, actually help us hook this thing up. If we look at the uh, procedure that we're going to uh, do here, that's uh, right here. So we're gonna build the uh, circuit and then we're going to, and this is a bit of a misnomer. Yeah, we're gonna measure I1 and I2, but not directly. Uh, so uh, I've already very carefully measured the um, resistance of those resistors. I've removed them from the circuit, measured their resistance and put them back in. And then when I measure the voltage across them and divide by that resistance, I can get a, a, a good way of getting that current. I'm going to also measure VOS and uh, V out and V in. This VOS is up here. This is the difference between the uh, negative terminal and the positive terminal. So remember that in our, our work we said that well we're going to assume that this voltage is the same there so we're going to expect VOS to be a, a small value and we'll see if we can uh, uh, get to that. So that's uh, procedure number two and then if we continue on we've got uh, Procedure number three, vary VN while recording VN and VOUT, take enough points to produce a good uh, positive and negative saturation curve. Uh, so we'll do that. And then uh, number four is when we get into the uh, second circuit, we're asked to draw a circuit diagram for a non-inverting op-amp circuit with a gain of two. So we'd expect if we put in uh, two that we would get four out. If we put in four, we'd get out eight. Um, if we put in eight, we're probably going to get to saturation. So that's that's what we're looking for. And I'll talk about uh, what you need uh, to do uh, that. And with that, the non-inverting, we're going to be uh, taking several measurements so that we can uh, verify its performance, namely produce a saturation curve. So, and, and in doing both of these saturation curves, I'm going to take a few points to show you what's going on. And then I, I don't know that there's any value in you uh, watching me uh, take a point, take a point, take a point, and so forth. So I'll probably just go ahead and do those off camera and give you that data. So that's the uh, procedure. Let's look a little bit at uh, background information here. If we go back to lecture number uh, 15, we can see the, uh, the pin diagram, and these are just the PDFs from the lecture note. Here's our uh, pin diagram, and on these, uh, the chips, and uh, take a quick look here. Hopefully this is on camera. Yeah, there's the uh, chip for the uh, first circuit, and there's the chip for the second circuit. So those are both the uh, exact same uh, chips, um, and uh, you, you can you can see that pre pretty small I mean, compared to the, uh, the pencil tip and whatnot. So the pin diagrams for those, and we always know uh, how to reference this. Usually there's some sort of a notch or cutout in it, and sometimes there's a little indentation or a little uh, dimple right there. That always tells you that this is pin one. You number them one, two, three, four, then five, six, seven, eight. Up like that okay so that that's how you do that if we uh, continue on through lecture 15 
Sometimes they'll come in a little different package, and I'll just refer you to uh, 15. Sometimes they'll, they'll look like that in a little uh, metal can package. We won't be using that today. And then um, when we talk about the saturation curve, if we have a non-inverting, we'll look at this saturation curve that I, I gave you in a lecture. So we put in a positive value here. We expect a positive value out there. We put in a negative value here. We expect a negative value out there. And um, we, th this can't just go on forever. As I, I said in lecture, we're not going to extend that line. Uh, eventually, we're going to get saturation. We're going to come up here, and depending on what our uh, VCC is, what our uh, source voltage is for that op amp, we're uh, going to have saturation. And in class, we come up to this nice sharp corner. We'll, we'll see in lab here that uh, nature doesn't usually have a lot of sharp corners. We'll, we'll have quite a bit of roll off uh, there. But it is going to saturate. We can't, if we put in one volt, we would expect two volts out. If we put in two volts, we'd expect four volts out. But if we put in 10 volts, we're not going to get 20 volts out. It's going to be saturated. Now this uh, red curve here is if we have a inverting operational amplifier. So we put in a positive number, we get a, expect a negative number out. We put in a negative number, we expect a positive number out. So our saturation curves will be a little bit flipped like that when we compare the uh, inverting to the non-inverting. And as we uh, develop this, and you've used this in the uh, uh, homework problems and probably even in so the, uh, the test questions, we always had that V plus is equal to V minus. We didn't necessarily know what they were. Sometimes it was equal to zero, but we knew that the difference between these two values was zero. That's our VOS, right? So when I measure the difference between these two, we would expect that to be very close to zero. Now, we're working in the practical here. That's what the laboratory is about. Uh, so it may not be exactly zero, but it should be pretty small in comparison with everything else. And then also we've used this, that I plus is equal to I minus is equal to zero. So again, it may not be perfectly zero, but it should be a pretty small number in comparison to everything else. So that's one of the things that we're going to look at here. I think that's lecture 15 material. Let me switch on you here. And go to lecture 16. So with lecture 16, this is uh, basically the circuit that we have there. That's why I knew it was an inverting uh, circuit. We went through this in, in lecture. Hopefully you went through it in uh, lecture. You may want to uh, pop back there, watch the video, or at least peruse the, uh, the PDF and get that information. And we know that it's then governed by this equation right here. We've got the negative sign. That's why we call it an inverting. We put in something positive and we're going to get out something negative and vice versa. So that's our first circuit, the inverting circuit. And then probably more what you're interested in is you're going to be asked to come up with the non-inverting. Okay. So the non-inverting looks something like this. And uh, I guess I, I probably should have mentioned here in a practical sense, we put this resistor in here uh, for a little bit of safety sometimes. I, I don't know whether I put that in here or not. Looks like I didn't. We're, we're running without that. Uh, so we're just uh, being kind of wild here. But uh, anyway, that's okay. Um, because there should be zero current from a, an analysis standpoint uh, and a number standpoint, it should not affect it. Now this one over here is a little more important because I've got this source. So putting this resistor in here is quite a bit more important. And I think even if I was trying to be a, a cowboy here, yeah, you'll see that I, I put that one into, uh, into to here. Um, right. Where are we here? Let's see. This is this resistor. So this one, nope, excuse me. This resistor right there is that one, and this resistor right there is that one, and then this resistor right here is that one. And that's really just a 1000 or 2000 ohm resistor just for protection. So that's what's going on there. So and I'll spend a little more time talking about that circuit when we, we get there. So 
Anyway, this is really immaterial to the analysis. It's just there for safety. And then we have uh, these two resistors that are going to affect the uh, magnification, if you will, or the gain and how this thing performs. So we've got RS and RF. I think we've designated them R1 and R2 in the lab. And we go through this analysis and we came up with the uh, equation here. And again, you, you've got this at your disposal, disposal if you have a hard time seeing this thing. But here we go, we've got our output is equal to Vs uh, times this factor here. If we want a gain of two, we just take V naught and divide it by Vs and set that equal to two. And that tells you then what's in this brackets, what it has to be. So I won't go into that any further. I'm not going to tell you what resistors I used. You need to figure out what um, resistors those need to be. And, and you might say, well, there's, there's a lot of range of resistors. Uh, you know, keep it a thousand to two thousand ohms and I think you should be uh, fine. But uh, you need to figure out what the exact values are going to be. So that's your inverting and your non-inverting. So then if we move to if we move to the uh, the questions, the question sheet, and again, uh, you'll have this, um, but it says to comment on the uh, relative in comparison to other things, magnitudes of VOS, hopefully that's pretty small. It would be nice if it was zero, but uh, hopefully it's pretty small. And I minus, again, hopefully that's pretty small. It'd be nice if it was zero, but hopefully it's pretty small. Show the saturation curve for procedure three, that's for the inverting one. Okay, so that'll be something I'll give you the data. You can then uh, do it on uh, Excel. Sketch the circuit for procedure four. So I want you to draw that and I want you to come up with what the resistors need to be. Okay, uh, and, and it's your resistors may not be the exact same value as mine, but it's the relationship. If you pick a value for R1, then you have to follow through with an appropriate value for R2 and so forth. So trying to trying to keep this a, a little bit interesting, not do everything for you, not to totally spoil the surprise. So you need to draw that circuit and you need to come up with what R1 and R2 is. And then finally uh, show the saturation curve for that circuit too. We'll, again, we'll take the data and you should be able to uh, to do that. I guess that's off the screen there. Sorry about that. Show the saturation curve for procedure four. So that's it. Pretty, hopefully pretty straightforward. Well, let's turn our attention to the, uh, the circuits and uh, maybe I'll try and zoom in just a little bit more with the uh, camera. It makes a pretty rough noise, so sorry about that. But uh, That'll be okay. So I've got these wires here because uh, first off, I'm using, uh, my, my designer has uh, the plus and minus 15 volts and then I need a yet another source. So there's a couple ways that I could do that. If I uh, wanted to, now that I've got this zoomed in, hopefully I can uh, see this. If I wanted to, I could actually use the uh, the VCC, take the VCC off of this and use my uh, one of the potentiometers that's built into this thing, maybe put a resistor that's similar to kind of the average value of that potentiometer, and I could make myself a little variable voltage source. So that is that is possible. That's something you could do. That's a, you know, our plus or minus VCC over there. If we want to do uh, one side of the curve, we'd use plus. If we want to do the other side of the curve, we'd use negative. And then we could just adjust it by twisting that potentiometer. Uh, that, that, that adds a little more complexity to this. And I wouldn't want someone to think that I was playing around and, and messing with the VCC and whatnot. So I, I'm actually not going to do this. I have the uh, luxury of having another source here. So that's uh, what I'm going uh, to do. And I'll, I'll show that when I uh, pan out in a moment. And I, I don't want to keep zooming in and zooming out because I, I know the noise is probably a little bit, uh, it's one of those noises that probably bugs people like uh, scratching a chalkboard. So here's our uh, chip uh, right there. And when you uh, work with these, you have to be really careful. They, they, they click into these holes and you wanna be careful that to get the pins, there's four pins on each side into each one of those holes. So then when, once you do that, once we have this in here, you know that all of these other holes are gonna be connected to that pin there. So that's kind of nice. Now, when you uh, put this chip in and when you take it out, you have to be careful that you don't bend the legs. When you put it in, you need to make sure that all eight of the legs are 
uh, start it in the holes and it goes in. And uh, incidentally, if you have uh, uh, pins that have uh, more legs, that it's the same numbering scheme. You number down the left-hand side and up the uh, right-hand side, but uh, we just have four on each side or eight pins. So when you're putting this in there, make sure that they, they go into the, each hole and then you can, you can push them home and you want it to be pretty firm. Then taking it out is where you can really damage it. You don't want to just uh, you know grab it with your fingernail or a screwdriver or something and flick one side out because what's going to happen is that side's going to come out and this side's going to stay and you're going to end up bending these. So what you want to do is bring this side up a little bit and then come over and bring this side up a little bit and work it out so that the that the chip comes straight up out of its orientation and you don't bend those legs. So really want to emphasize that. I know, unfortunately, you're not going to be doing that, um, but that's something that uh, we really harped on when we met with students face-to-face. Uh, -face. Don't just grab the chip and flick it, flick it out of there because you will bend those, uh, those other legs. I think that's uh, it on that. Let's go ahead and uh, zoom out. Okay, so I think that's uh, okay. So like I said, I've got the uh, first circuit right here, the inverting. That's this one, and I've got the second circuit uh, right here. That's the non-inverting. And uh, as I mentioned, this uh, resistor here, that's, that's this one. I just put a, a 1K or 2K in there. And then these two are the ones that you need to figure out what this resistor should be and what that resistor should be. And there's you know lots of correct answers because once you pick one for this one, then you have to follow suit with, with finding the value for that one. Okay. The uh, other thing is up here, you, uh, it's uh, probably a little bit hard to see, but I've got the uh, this uh, this one is my uh, plus VCC, and it's a it's a variable that uh, will go from uh, what's it say 1.3 to 15. 1.3 that's kind of random, but anyway, um, so that that'll go up to about plus 15. This is my minus VCC, that'll go to minus 15. And then this is my ground that I, I reference that with. Okay, so that's, um, so this is my, uh, my, my plus, this is my minus, and that's the ground. And then, as I mentioned, I needed another source. I needed something, there is, there is my plus VCC, that's gonna go to pin number seven my minus VCC, that's going to go to pin number four. And then I needed this source right here, that source right there. But what do I do with that? That's what these wires are that are in the way of the camera. Those are going over to my, my second. And this is where I said that I could, if I wanted to, pop back to this, I could use this if I wanted to and just keep it all on one board, um, build a little uh, voltage divider with my potentiometer down here. But I've got this other source, so I'll just use it. So I come over here and just about off camera, but I'm gonna start out with my positive values here. So I will adjust this for the, uh, the positive values. And then I've got the uh, ground there. This ground is just gonna go over and ground back here. So the ground on this one is the same state as the ground on this one. If I want the other side of the saturation curve, then I'm gonna move this uh, red wire here this red wire over to this this minus. So I'll be doing that. I think that uh, pretty well gets that going. Let's go ahead and uh, start to take some data. I'll go ahead and uh, fire this up and we'll check this out. Get this uh, meter going here. And yeah, I think we're good. Maybe I'll turn the light on. Does that, I think that helps a little bit. Get this one going. Okay, good. So 
I've got this one and I've actually uh, changed one of the leads so it's got an alligator clip on it, it goes from the, uh, the the black over here to ground so this this meter I'm always going to be reading things that are referenced to ground so if I look at my minus VCC I've got uh, up here minus 14.95 and I should probably write that down So minus VCC is minus 14.95 volts and plus VCC, we'll do that in a moment. So the plus over here, positive 14.94. And we're not, we shouldn't expect those to change and uh, just write those down for completeness sake. So if we uh, get to writing this thing up and um, we get some, some bad values, we'll, uh, we can go back and check at what uh, some of our inputs were. So let me double check those with what I wrote down. Yeah, that's fine. And yeah, okay. Good. So then I'm going to, I think uh, procedure number two said with your input voltage at four volts. So let's check that. There's my input voltage, 3.95. And it's fairly touchy, so I'm just going to leave it at that, 3.95, 3.95. So that's VM, 3.95 volts. I'll see what my output voltage is. That's right here at pin six. So it looks like minus 7.94, 7.94. So we take a, a quick look at this data so far. My input 3.95, so that's about four. My output minus 7.94, that's about minus eight. So it looks like I am multiplying by minus two, right? So that seems to be working. I think I'll go ahead and uh, take some of these uh, other values here so I can look at uh, coming up with my VOS and look at uh, coming up with I minus. Incidentally, before this started, I measured R1 at uh, 983 ohms and R2 at 1975. And again, I'm not gonna keep belaboring that, but I took those out. If they're in the circuit, you can't get an accurate measurement. So I powered down, I took them out, I measured them and I put them back in the circuit. Well. Let me switch meters on you here. I'm going to move over to this meter uh, because I can uh, measure just across the resistor with it. Okay, so I'm going to measure the voltage across this resistor one with that. I've got it on uh, volts. Let's do that. So right across there. And we get 3.946, 3.946. And where we got the uh, voltmeter going, let me measure the voltage across um, this one here. So that's R2. Voltage across R2 is 7.93. 7.93. So I'll put that down. Seven point nine three volts. So, if I want to figure this out, if I want to look at the uh, currents here, I can say that I one. That's going to be this uh, three point nine four six divided by nine eighty three, and this uh, I two. That's the current through R two is going to be 7.93 divided by 1975. Grab the calculator here. This turns out to be 0 0.05. 
0.040. Oh, this will be about uh, four milliamps. And um, I could multiply by a, a thousand, get it in milliamps or, or change the uh, display on my calculator, but I, I'm gonna keep it in the calculator. And really what I'm most concerned about is the, the difference down here. So um, I would agree that I, I need more significant figures here, but uh, I'm keeping it in my calculator, so I should be okay. Now this one, uh, 7.93. Oh, well, this is looking good, 0 0.0040. So again, about four milliamps. And then when I find the difference between these, I subtract them. I have minus 9.47 times 10 to the minus seven. Okay, so I did have some more stuff out here. Uh, it looks like a, the, the negative, I'm, I'm most concerned just with the absolute value of this. Uh, and, and anyway, I think we can pretty easily conclude that that is about zero, isn't it? So that approximation that I minus is equal to zero is, is not too bad. I think we, we did okay on this. You can, if you want to, take uh, use these numbers and take these out to a few more significant figures. But as you can see here, we don't get a lot of difference until we get uh, way out there. Well, the last thing I need to measure here is VOS. So let's do that. So VOS, and that's gonna take some, uh, this is like the little game where you try not to, uh, uh, you know, play surgery on the little little thing. And you, if you touch it, it, it grounds it out and the buzzer rings. So that's just between, I want to measure the voltage between pins two and three. So that one's pretty easy. That gets me to pin two and then pin three, I'll just touch directly. Looks like maybe I'll do it this way here. Bring this in so I can get a little better contact right there and right there. And you can see on the uh, meter to my uh, left, in the left part of your screen, it's showing zero. But that, that might be a misnomer. I'm set up here with uh, volts, okay? We said it's gonna be small. Maybe we should scale down into millivolts. So let's do that. I'm gonna take this into millivolts now. So I'm gonna measure millivolts. Let me see if I can get set up in there again. So I'll put this one on pin number three. I'll put this one on pin number two. It looks like I have about 0.4 millivolts, and that's what it was when I set this thing up. So that doesn't surprise me, 0.4 millivolts. So back over here, 0 0.4 millivolts, 10 to the minus three volts. So I think we've done okay with this. We've shown that this I minus really is about zero. It's not exactly zero, but in comparison with everything else, it's pretty close. And then our VOS, we're measuring everything else in terms of volts, and this is a fraction of a thousandth of a volt, fraction of a millivolt. So I think we are doing uh, well with that. So we've got that done nicely. We've got some data and I will be uh, passing that on to you. The next part of this that we need to do is we need to look at VN versus V out for uh, this circuit so we can come up with our uh, saturation. So I'll be filling out this table here. And as I alluded to before, um, I'm not going to uh, belabor this and have you uh, watch me do every value. I'll do a few of them, a few of them prior to saturation, a couple of them in saturation, and we will call that uh, good. I'll do the rest of them off camera and pass that information on to you. So let's do that. So I'm gonna go back to this meter that's referenced off of ground. I'm gonna uh, read this one. In fact, I think I can get this out of the way. And so I think we said, we'll just take this point here. Didn't we say we had 3.95? So 3.95 and our V out right here, minus 7.94. 
And I think I'll uh, turn this down a little bit. There we go. 1.92. And our output then would be minus 3.8. See, 1.92, that's about 2, that's about minus 4. Yep, our, our ratio is still being conserved, minus 3.86. Okay, now I've got Excel to sort my data, so I don't necessarily need to do the data in any order. Um, let's go here. I can go back up to... Maybe we'll do about 6... 6.29, there's, there's pretty close to 6. 6.04. And what are we getting for the output? 12.13, minus 12.13. So that's pretty good. Let's do, um, let's try s about 7. It was pretty close to seven. Yeah, that's exactly seven. So 7.00, what do we get on our output here? Minus 12.4. Okay. Well, you can start to see what's happening here. We're starting to uh, saturate by do this, let's see, we've got uh, seven, let's do eight. Oh, let's just go crazy, we'll do eight and a half. There we well, maybe we'll do nine, that's fine. 8.86 it is. 8.86. And what do we get on our output here? Minus 12.35. Minus 12.35. Okay. So if we look at this uh, data then, we have this, we multiply by minus 2, we get that. Multiply by minus 2, multiply by minus 2. But then when we get up here, we're starting to get closer to saturation. Remember, we're running this at our, what was our saturation number? Our plus VCC was about 15 right here, right there. So I mentioned it was going to start to roll off. We're probably not going to get up to minus 15, and, and we don't. We just come up to that. It looks like we're well into uh, to saturation there. And when I, I take the data, I'll probably take one more value up above just to uh, confirm that. Uh, but it looks like well, it's not much of an 8 there. Didn't get much better. But anyway... It looks like we've definitely got into uh, saturation. Well, let's try the other side of this in, in, in that. Let's see if we can do some minus values here, and we'd expect then probably positive values there. Let's do that real fast. So to do that, I'm going to switch over here. And... So I have, oh, that's too high. Let's get that back down. So that's about minus 5, minus 4.90. And what do we expect on the output with that? Positive 10.2. Yeah, it looks like it's multiplied by minus 2. We'll do uh, one more. Maybe we will uh, take this thing, run this up a little bit. 
or I guess down since it's a negative number. Let's go to about, uh, there's minus eight, that's nice. And what do we get on the output with that? About 13.8, 13.8. Okay, so if we look at our uh, data here, took a, a couple more points. And I'll, like I say, off camera, I'm going to take some more points. I don't know that there's a lot of value in you watching me do this, but uh, we've got uh, this. This is uh, one part of our uh, saturation curve, and it definitely saturates. Here, it's again in the, the this point is nicely in the linear uh, region, and this one we again get into saturation. And it's interesting the saturation doesn't occur at the same point. While our uh, plus and minus VCC was pretty close to the same, minus 14.95 versus positive 14.94, our positive and negative saturation, it's not uncommon for those to be uh, different levels. So, so that's, that's good. We can turn our attention to the second uh, circuit. So let's do that. So I just need to hook that up. We've got the ground up here, so that's okay. All I will uh, really need to do is move this wire. This becomes our input. I've got then, this is the uh, circuit here for the uh, non-inverting. Again, you go back to your uh, lecture notes that I uh, referenced. I think I'll start out with the uh, positive inputs. So I'll switch terminals over here again. And I think we can uh, get this thing going. So let's see if this thing uh, behaves. I've got, uh, yeah, it's a little too high. Let's start out. It's hard to tell whether it's working or not if you're saturated, so. Okay, so there's 2.98 in, 2.98. And the output, okay, 2.98, fairly close to 3, multiply by a positive 2, we should be pretty close to 6, right? Which we are, 5.94. So we'll do another one here. There's 4.02, 4.02, and what are we going to get there on the output? 8.03, 8.02. Okay, so it looks like it's behaving pretty well. Let's go up a little more. Let's get into saturation. Point oh four, and our output thirteen point nine eight. Okay, so it looks like we've got saturation there. Apparently, this thing didn't think I was working enough. Okay. That beeping and whatnot is just the meter auto turning off. So, okay. Well, so we've got the uh, data points for a portion of half of this thing. We can see that uh, these points here, and we need to do more than two points, but again, I'll, I'll do those off camera. We've got a couple points here where it's nicely linear, a point here where it's uh, saturated. Let's, uh, let's flip this thing. Let's look at some negative numbers here. These are all 
This is positive, that was positive, that was positive, this was positive, this was positive, this was positive. So let's go get some negative numbers and see what we get on the output of that. So again, to do that, I'm going to switch my, my input voltage here. I'll come over here and uh, s switch terminals. And what do we have here? Maybe we'll go down with this. Minus 3.1. And what do we get on our output? Minus 6.19, minus 6.2, minus 6.19. So it looks like it's behaving nicely. We'll do a couple more points here. So let's do about uh, minus 4.5. Minus 4.53. This auto ranging is kind of uh, a little awkward on this meter. I should probably maybe set it up manual. What do we get in for an output? Minus 9.06. Looks like that's multiplying by positive 2. And let's do our last point here. The last one on camera. I'll do some more off camera, but let's do the last one. Let's get it up into a saturation or again with a negative number down into saturation. Let's go really into saturation. There we go. Minus 11. Minus, yeah, maybe I'll turn it back a little bit. Minus 9.77. And we get then for the output, we get uh, minus 12.56. So that uh, data looks uh, pretty good on that. We had that uh, behaving uh, nicely, multiplying by two in the linear region, then it's saturated. Here, when we uh, flip that, when we started putting negative values into this, so we get the other side of the curve, it's uh, linear, behaving well, multiplying again by two, so a negative number is still a negative number, negative number is still a negative number, and saturates, always, always an end to these good things, it ends up saturating, so I think that's uh, good. So I'll put some more data points on there and pull this uh, data together and uh, get that to you. I think that uh, that gets us in pretty good shape. Let's look at our questions again. And again, I uh, noticed this is a ways off on the screen here, but so we've got some good data. That one should be easy. Comment on the relative values of VOS and I minus. Show the saturation curve, spend some time with that, label the axes. If you're going to do it by hand, it needs to, you know, that's going to be a lot of work to make a good curve. Probably a lot easier to throw it into Excel. That's why you learned Excel. Uh, sketch circuit number four. I haven't told you what these resistors are. I guess you can zoom in and try and get the uh, color bands off of that. that that's fine. Um, but it's probably a lot easier to go to your lecture notes. I talked about that, and I believe that was uh, lecture 16, wasn't it? lecture 16 and uh, you can figure out what what those are it's not this resistor here that's just for protection 1k 2k don't worry too much about that but the relative values of those and I say relative because uh, one student may have different values than the other um, and that's fine keep your values somewhere inside about 1k and 2k and you'll be in pretty good shape on that so you need to draw that circuit and you need to label those resistors okay um, that's that you need to do so you can get something out of this lab and then again the saturation curve i'll give you the data for that um, if you did this saturation curve you can do this saturation curve they'll, they'll look different uh, but same process label the axes make sure that uh, you, you know what's going on so we know which axes v in which axes v out and and so forth a lot of you are doing really well on this uh, work so this should go well for you and i expect uh, big things from you the last thing to mention 
on this is um, if we were to take this apart, obviously we'd want to put our resistors back when we're in a laboratory. We usually have a quarter watt resistors and half watt resistors. So they have the same values. It's just that half watt resistors will dissipate up to a half watt. Quarter watts will dissipate up to a quarter watt. So as you would expect, the quarter watt resistors are just smaller, they're smaller in physical size. Their value is the same, but their physical size, they're just more delicate. Um, so we have to be careful how we put those away. So just giving you these little tips if you uh, find yourself back in our lab or in another lab that there's a, a tent that you can have several different resistors and they look drastically different and they all be 1k resistors. It's how much wattage they are, are set to dissipate. So we'll see that again and again. So we have to make sure that we put those back in the not only the right spot, whether if it's a 1k or if it's a 2k, but also in terms of their wattage value. The other thing to uh, think about on this is if we pull out these uh, um, chips, Usually, when you start looking at integrated circuits, they're they're very delicate inside. Sometimes so these are pretty these are pretty tough, uh, but you want to be careful of static. We're not going to deal with any circuits where we have to take those types of uh, precautions in in terms of static. But that, that it, you, you if you're electrical, you may well go on to to do something where you have to make sure that you're grounded and wear the the static straps and have uh, the the floors and other surfaces make sure that they're anti-static. Uh, so that might be something you talk about with chips. Our biggest concern here, if we were to tear this circuit apart, would be to, uh, first of all, we need to turn the power off, but to make sure that we don't just flick one end of this chip out and bend the other leg. So very carefully uh, extract the, 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 the chip by pulling it up. Okay, so I think uh, that's it. I'll be uh, sending the, uh, the data along with this. Uh, it should be a, a pretty good lab to write up. We've got one more lab with uh, lab six, gonna be uh, AC circuit. So we're gonna get over here and, and use the uh, function generator on this and use the oscilloscope. So that should be a fun way to wrap up lab and to uh, wrap up the term. So thanks for listening and uh, I will see you next time. Take care till then.